Kia ora and welcome to the Peterson Odyssey. Um, it's just me today, Daryl, um, and I have both been a bit sick recently and my voice is kind of maybe just good enough to be able to do an intro to this video. What we're doing today is we're going to take you through a couple of the cargo van choices that you could make if you were looking at converting your own van. We're based here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, so we're just talking about vans that are available locally to us. We've gone and done some research, we've thought about how we would kit them out to get the ultimate layout that would work for how we want to use a van if you saw in our last episode we took you through a couple of the different choices that you can make about your home on wheels whether it's a home for the weekend or a home for life if you like that video i will just put a link to it in the card just up here and you can watch that to see maybe if cargo van conversions aren't your gig maybe there's something up there for you what we'd really love for you to do is we'd love for you to subscribe to the Peterson Odyssey. We're here just making videos about travel, about van life and about building a van here in New Zealand. We are just a few weeks away from our van arriving from the factory and then we're going to hit it out in terms of taking you through our journey, showing you the van build. But between now and then we're going to take you through some of the van planning process. You know you want to be there with us. Join that subscribe. I keep pointing down in the bottom because I'm pretty sure that's where the button is. And and, um, and come and be part of the Peterson Odyssey with us. The first van that we're going to have a look at is a Renault van. In fact, we're going to have a look at two of them. The one here that you can see on the left is the long wheelbase, and the one on the right is the medium wheelbase. We'll look at that second. Woohoo, van number one is a 2020 Renault Master. The inside of the van is all very um, nicely laid out. You've got the dual doors here. Personally, I'd probably avoid those if I was looking for a cargo van to convert. What we're trying to do is to figure out how big this van is, so let's crack into it. Uh, it's not quite uh, 3.8 metres. So then I count this as like a medium wheelbase. Yeah, but, uh, 150 is so there. Size so uh, then you could have like one unit there. Like this might be the kind of van that you'd put like one of those inbuilt shower things in because I don't think you could have a standalone shower but then you can have your kitchen your kitchen over here but I don't think you have room for a I don't think you'd have room for a sofa and a kitchen unless you put the kitchen here and you just had a really small one up to about there we spent quite a bit of time in that van trying to figure out ultimate layouts and we'll show you what we came up with in a minute. In the meantime, we thought we'd check out the cab. It's pretty nice, it's very modern, it seems to have all the right features, it's got a really good digital display, it's got a space to charge your phone. It was pretty comfortable. These vans come with the three seats, we'd probably swap out the two seats here as the bench for a single swivel seat, so you've got an extra seating space in however you want to configure the van, an extra seat that swivels around to be part of your house can only be but a good thing. So this is how we'd lay out the Renault Master 2020 long wheelbase. We think it's really important to have a fixed bed so we think that would be in the space it would take up about 150 centimetres from the back of the van, a metre and a half, and you would lie across the van to sleep. What we'd do is probably have drawers, so clothes storage or just general storage beside the bed, and this would allow you to have kind of the equivalent of a bedside table, and then from there you'd drop down into a sofa, which you could then have a table mount on the end of it or on the side of it, so you can swivel that table to go across the sofa so it's out of the way, become part of your dining space, potentially swivel out the door, but also you could swivel it between the sofa and and the swivel seat that you've got to turn around in front if you wanted to sit across from dine, uh, dine from each other. Beside the bed on the other wall, that's where we would put a fixed shower and in the fixed shower we'd have a toilet as well where um, vans of the nature's head toilet so we've already bought one for our van so we'd have one of those in there. We've been quite generous with the shower space because we don't want to be too cramped up while you're having a shower or having to take the toilet out of the shower every time so that's why we've got the, the shower in that much space if you're building it you might be able to cheat a little bit and then on the wall across from the sliding door that's where we put the kitchen you'd have a window there so you've got great views a window that vents in some way so you can make Make sure that you know cooking smells go out get a nice cross breeze all of that good stuff the kitchen here wouldn't be too big it would be pretty much a basic um, kitchen layout with the fridge under one side some kind of cupboards or drawers underneath on the other side um, the sink would be 
uh, probably in this case against a shower wall. So you'd have the sink and your cooktop out fixed all the time with wall storage above. Above the drawers and the bed on the um, on the south side here, on the shower side, we probably have overhead cabinets because you want to maximise your space as best you can in a van. This is how we would choose to live in this van. It would be tight, but not impossible. And the things that are really important to us, storage, shower, kitchen, sofa, and, and a fixed bed would all fit. After checking out one Renault, the Renault Master long wheelbase, we're now going to go and have a look at its smaller sister, the medium wheelbase. We didn't quite get a good enough shot of this when we were at the car dealership because the vans were so tightly parked in. So here's what it does look like. Okay, so you're inside this one? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Oh, she's little. Yeah, just three meters. So where's one and a half meters? So your van, your your bed, if you had a queen, come here. If you went three, three, five, that's a double size. Is this as big as the drop? Yeah. You wouldn't be able to get much in here, but if you're traveling by yourself and you decided you didn't want a shower, you could have a toilet in here, but I don't think you'd have a shower. Yeah, you didn't want this, you that, but... We're not going to show you the cab because it's exactly the same as the one we just had a look at. But what we are going to show you is how we would think about this space. This looks slightly different than the van we've just shown you. And one of the reasons is what we've done is we've trimmed back the bed. So in theory, it's about as wide as a double. But what we have here in this long skinny sofa section is this idea of a sofa that has a back on it. You pull the back up and then that becomes the base of your bed. A la Eamon and Beck. If you're not familiar with Eamon and Beck, I'm just going to put their card up here and you should totally check them out. They have inspired our van life uh, journey. And then what we're thinking about with the sofa is probably having an L-shaped sofa. It's really important to be comfortable, especially if you're planning on living in your van. And so having a difference between your fixed bed, which we're still pretty keen on because we want to have a decent garage size, and the sofa is really important. You'll see here I've called it so sofa slash toilet. That's not an accident. What we're thinking is on your sofa, you'd have your um, padded seat and then you'd probably lift it up and then access the toilet that way or alternatively pull the toilet out on some kind of runner it does mean that you'd have to be very comfortable with each other because we're not anticipating having any kind of enclosure around the toilet it's important in New Zealand in particular if you want to have a self-contained vehicle you have to have a toilet and that means that you can freedom camp really easily so it's important to us to include that in the design again it's not for everyone you'd have to really be pretty open and honest with whomever you were traveling with. You'll notice that there's no shower in our design. We ummed and ahed about this one. And actually for us, that's a deal breaker. Like this is a, not a van that we would buy. But what we would do if you were looking at this is putting some kind of outdoor shower in the back of the garage, probably quite close to wherever your water source is going to be. Opening up the van doors, hooking up some kind of shower curtain and being able to shower outside in private. We have built in a kitchen it's in a slightly different location than the van that we looked at before again it's still a smallish kitchen you'd put your fridge in there you'd have the overhead storage as you did before and, and then what we have put in probably just behind the driver's side and remember in New Zealand we drive on the other side of the road um, is that storage cupboard that could be a pull-out pantry it could be two half cupboards it could be a series of drawers it could be drawers and a, and a hanging storage but what we do think is some floor to ceiling storage would be really key in this van all right we're changing tack and we're heading off to go and check out a ford transit van Mmm. 
the Ford Transit van. It is huge. And we've been able to play around with the layout to reflect its size. You would have seen when we were measuring inside, Daryl was measuring all the way up to the ceiling. This van has an extra high roof. So there's normal height vans, there's cargo vans, which have the standard height. And then this was a, a bit more again. So it was two meters in height. What that would mean inside the van is you can have multiple sets of upper cabinets. You can have cabinets with openings um, opening doors on them and then you could also have like a shelf underneath or a slightly more indented cabinet so you could fit a lot in but I don't think you're going to be short of space we've planned to have the fixed bed again sleeping across the width of the van because we're short people we can but if you were a tall person you could actually rotate this bed and still have plenty of storage for your kitchen your pantry your shower and your sofa put the sofa so it faces out toward the sliding door mainly that's so you can enjoy the view you want to be able to open the door and take in the scenery whether you're at the beach in the bush at the mountains maybe not with the door open at the mountains who knows but the point here is to be comfortable Comfortable. And also, being, having the sofa in the front of the van means you can turn the swivel seats around and extend that uh, upper living space. We've got the, when you walk into the van, the shower is to your right hand side. That wasn't ever in my plan, but when we like, played with layouts here, we figured that could be quite cool. You could have a pull up table for extra counter space, um, just as a place to put keys, maybe a shelf or some kind of storage system on that wall. Between the shower and the bed, we've planned a floor to ceiling pantry. When we build our van, that's one thing at the stage we're hoping to have, there'll be a long kitchen bench, a long counter. That means that you've got a really nice line of sight from the front of the van to the back of the van. The kitchen would have the fridge in there, fixed sink, obviously, and a fixed cooktop. But you may also have drawers for clothes, linen, that kind of thing. I think in this van, it's just great in terms of layout. If we'd found this van before we ordered the crafter that we're buying, brand new, both these vans are new, I probably would have bought this one because it's about $20,000 cheaper than what we have paid. If you can nab yourself the high roof Ford Transit new model, go for it. So now we're on to the one that we have bought, the Volkswagen Crafter. you are going to see more and more videos of us inside this van measuring and eventually building it out not this exact van because the hours are still getting made in the factory the Volkswagen Crafter was our number one or number two choice we were tossing up between this and a Mercedes Sprinter this is our van layout so again we're having the fixed bed at the back we've talked about that we're having the long kitchen bench which Again, makes that lovely line of sight all the way from the front of the cab out the back window and then we've got the shower a full floor to ceiling pantry and then a pretty big sofa so we can look out to the world beyond us so that's it that's our take on three different vans that are available in the New Zealand market right now with the global pandemic it's quite hard to get stuff especially here at the bottom of the world and when we were talking with the various uh, salespeople at the different car yards they were saying that the vans in New Zealand especially the new ones are getting snapped up just like that we put our order in for our crafter um maybe around august and we're expecting it in january and that's you know fingers crossed assuming that everything happens according to plan one thing that we really want to stress in this video and i say we because just daryl's just not here because he's sick um is that these are just our opinions not everyone wants to have a shower not everyone wants to have a fixed bed but for us, this, we just wanted to share some of the thinking that we've done with our hours and hours and hours of watching YouTube of different van life and reading blogs and following stuff on Instagram to come up with how we'd interpret essentially what's a big metal box and turning it into a home on wheels. On our next episode, we are going to take you through our van 
build a little bit more obviously we don't have the van yet but the planning that we've done and maybe start to share some of our budget so we'll be releasing that video next week on Friday if you love the Peterson Odyssey hit that subscribe we know about 80% of the people who watch our videos aren't subscribed to us yet uh, it doesn't take much it's absolutely free to you and it does just let us know that the things that we're creating people are finding useful can't wait to see you next week and um, hopefully I'll be joined by Daryl, the other half of the Peterson Odyssey and I look forward to seeing you then. Ka kite.